In this video, I'm going to outline two small proofs that deal with the ideas of radius and diameter of graphs. Just as a quick recap, remember that if you're looking at a pair of vertices in a graph, the distance between them is the length of a shortest path. Now, if you take a particular vertex in a graph and you take a look at all those shortest paths and you look at the maximum of those, that's the eccentricity of that vertex. Finally, if you take a look at all of the eccentricities in the graph and the minimum of that, that's the radius. The maximum of all of the eccentricities is the diameter. If you would like a quick review of this terminology, just click on this link for a video or check the links in the description below. Okay. Our first example is the following. We want to prove that if we have G a graph which is disconnected, then the complement of that graph is not only connected, its diameter is at most two. Before we work through a proof, let's check out a very small example. So let's draw one. Okay, I'm gonna draw one on only four vertices. And I have an isolated vertex and then a path on three vertices. Really simple. So now what I want to do is draw those vertices again and label them, and I want to think about what are the edges in the complement. Remember, my original graph was disconnected. So now if I take a look at the vertex that was isolated before, it's going to now be adjacent to the other three vertices. Now be careful, on the other side we had a path on three vertices, and those two edges disappear in the complement, but we do have the edge that goes from the top vertex down to the bottom vertex, so we put that edge in. Okay, that's all of the edges in our complement. Let's see if we can figure out its diameter. Clearly this is a connected graph. We have to figure out all of the eccentricities. So the eccentricity of the vertex that used to be isolated and no longer is isolated is one because it's adjacent to the other three. Well, what about the eccentricities of the others? If you take a look at vertex V2 in the middle, clearly it has a distance one path to U on the other side. But how far does it take to go to hit V1 and V3? That takes a path of length 2. So its eccentricity equals 2, and the same thing goes for V1 and V3. Alright, so we know that our eccentricities are equal to 1 or 2 in this particular example, which means that the diameter, being the maximum, is 2. Okay, we did an example and it worked. That's not a proof. Let's go ahead and see if we can prove it in general. For a general proof, we have to take G to be any disconnected graph. Now, since the graph is disconnected, we know it has at least two connected components. Remember that a connected component is a maximal connected subgraph of the graph. If you want a refresher about the difference between the words maximal and maximum, check out this video right here or the links in the description below. All right, so now we have this connected component, let's call it G1, and let's draw it. So here we have G1. Now, the rest of the graph may have a bunch of components, so we'll just draw a bunch of blobs. Maybe there's only one more blob, but there could be a bunch. And I want to refer to these two sets as different things. So I'm going to call V1 the set of vertices in our first connected component that we're thinking about, and V2 the rest of the vertices, however they are. So I'll just box them off separately like that. All right, so now I'm thinking about these two pieces of the graph. Observe that I haven't drawn in any edges in the graph. But remember that connected components means that any edge in this green graph is going to have to lie within one of those green blobs. Now, I'm not going to draw any specific edges, but what I do know is that there are no edges between blobs, and that's important. When I will draw the edges that represent the complement of this graph, I'm going to use the same vertex set, but I will draw the edges of the complement in a different color. So remember, the edges that have to do with the graph G are within the green blobs. What I want to do now is to take any vertex, let's call it U, from the set V1. Remember, that's the set of vertices from the first connected component that we're thinking about. So if I think about all the other vertices in the set V2, clearly there are no edges in the graph G from my vertex U to the other connected components. Remember we've said that all of the edges in G have to lie within the blobs, not between them. To recap, what this means is that for every vertex V in the set V2, there is not an edge from U to V in our graph G, but that means that there is an edge in the graph G bar, the complement. So let me draw all those edges in generically and I'll use the color pink. Okay, so remember now that the color pink is going to represent the complement graph. 
Obviously, when I take a look at the complement of the graph G, lots of other changes are going to occur. If I look in any particular green blob, if there was a pair of vertices that were adjacent, they will no longer be adjacent, and vice versa. So if they weren't adjacent, now they are. But I don't really need to worry about what happens in the rest of the blobs. What's really important is what happens between that first blob that I'm talking about and all the rest, between V1 and V2. In particular, so far we've already observed that any vertex U, which belongs to the vertex set V1, will be adjacent to any vertex V which belongs to the set V2. That means that their distance is equal to 1 in the complement graph. But now we just know that the distance between vertices in my set V1 and my big set V2 have distance 1. But what about vertices which could belong both in one side or both in the other? Let's consider those cases. So let's take two vertices, V1 and V2, from my big set V2. Now they may have belonged to different green blobs from the original graph, but I don't care. I think about how they are connected in the complement graph. They may have an edge between them. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But for sure, they do have an edge out to my vertex U and back. So they have distance at most two. It could be one, but definitely it's at most two. Next, consider two vertices U1 and U2 from my set V1. I want to also show that they are connected to each other by a path of length at most two. Again, they may have been connected previously or not, so there may or may not be an edge between them. But I do know that since both of these were in one side of the graph, they all have pink edges to go to the other side of the graph. What that means is I can follow a pink edge from one of them into the other side and then from that vertex back to the other one of those U1, U2 vertices. So again, I've found that in the complement graph, those vertices are at distance at most two away from each other. Now I've considered every possible pair of vertices and I've always found that their distance is at most two, which means that all of the eccentricities are at most two, which means if I then take the maximum of that, the diameter is at most two. And that concludes the proof. For our next example, we're gonna show that any given graph is the center of some connected graph. Remember what the center is. It's the set of all vertices whose eccentricity is equal to the radius. That's exactly what this statement says, but just in mathematical notation. So let's think about how we might do this. The proof will go like this. We start off with any given graph G, and we want to build a new graph, let's call it H. So here's how we do it. We start off with our given graph G, and I'll just draw it as a big blob. Now what we want to do is add two new vertices. Let me call them U1 and U2. Next, I want to add in a bunch of edges. I want to add in every edge from U1 to every vertex in G, and an edge from U2 to every vertex in G. Since I'm doing this, I will definitely have created a connected graph. Even if G had been previously disconnected, now it can go from any vertex in G back to one of the U's, and then back to any other vertex in G. So now it's a completely connected graph at this point. And let me just draw in the edges generically with these pink lines. Okay, we're not quite done. We want to add in two more vertices. Let's call those V1 and V2. All I'm going to do with V1 and V2 is add two more edges though. I'm going to add the edge from V1 to U1 and the edge from V2 to U2. Okay. This big graph here, let's call it H. This is the connected graph that we claim G is the center of. In order to see this, we have to look at all of the eccentricities. So we can look at the, all of the eccentricities case by case. Let's start off with the ones that look furthest out. Those are V1 and V2. Think carefully about the eccentricity of V1, for example. Obviously I can get from V1 to U1 in one go, in one edge and then to any vertex in the graph H with one more. So, so far I have a path of length two. Now I can get to U2 with one more, and finally V2 with one more. So the furthest possible vertex away from V1 is four, and it's that vertex V2. Hopefully that's clear. Similarly, the eccentricity of vertex V2 is also four, it's symmetric. 
Next, we'll take a look at the vertex U1. Obviously, it has distance 1 to V1, that's fine, but the furthest vertex away from it is vertex V2, and that's at distance 3. So you can check for yourself, the eccentricity is 3 for that vertex. And same thing goes for vertex U2, again by symmetry. Finally, let's take a look at the vertices X, where X is a vertex in my original graph G. A pair of vertices in my original graph G may or may not have been joined. But now that we've added in the vertices U1 and U2, we know that we can get to them in a path of length 2. Now we don't know that that's going to be the worst possible case until we look at vertices V1 and V2. For sure, there's only a path of length 2 from a vertex X which belonged to the graph G all the way out to vertex V2. That's the worst case. So we know that the eccentricity of all of those vertices X is equal to 2. What this means for us is that the radius of this graph, this new graph H, is 2. And in fact, the diameter is 4, and there are some other vertices which neither are in the center or the periphery. That's fine. So finally, we know that the center of this new graph, which is equal to the set of all vertices that have their eccentricity equal to the radius, which in this case is 2, is exactly the vertices of the graph G. And we've proven exactly what we wanted to. We've shown that a generic graph can be defined to be the center of some connected graph. We defined that connected graph. We found one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click here to check out related videos, and I'll see you next time.